So great, thank you. Um, I thought what I'd uh, do today is just spend a brief time talking about IBM in North Carolina, a little bit more on, on how we've partnered with the universities, then go to what our future student needs are, and then areas that we have been doing joint research, but actually where we can, I think, even double down and do some more. So if I talk just, uh, IBM is, uh, we have three campuses in, uh, in North Carolina, Charlotte, Greensboro, and then, uh, of course, here in Research Triangle Park. Uh, our campus in Research Triangle Park is actually IBM's largest uh, campus or, or site, if you will, in, uh, in all of the United States. So it is, uh, has every business unit present. I like to say that as IBM um, has transformed, uh, in fact, we're just uh, 51 years old in, in, uh, in RTP, so has our RTP site. When I hired with IBM, we were 80% hardware, and today we're 10% of our revenues come from hardware. So here in North Carolina, we went from a hardware manufacturing site, then we added a state-of-the-art software uh, development campus, then went to uh, services, and today we have all of the cognitive solutions based on the cloud platform. Um, including Watson, Watson Health, Internet of Things, cybersecurity, gaming, I could go on. Um, on Watson, we like to say Watson has a very, uh, it's actually very, very nice headquarters in New York City and in San Francisco, but if you want to know where Watson is doing the work, it's right here in North Carolina. <laughs> um, if you look at uh, from a, a uh, new way of working. We, we're really, it's, uh, we were very global centralized, but we've now gone to what's called agile, and you're bringing small teams together on site working. And I'll talk about that when I get to the future needs, because it does, we really do need T-shaped students coming out of the universities. Um, something people might not realize is that a quarter of our uh, employees here in, in uh, Research Triangle Park are actually less than five years with, uh, with uh, our company, and they're mainly out, coming right out of the university systems and, of course, right out of uh, the university systems here in North Carolina. We match that with 33% that have 25 years or more, so highly skilled, seasoned, and we're finding this combination is especially uh, powerful for us. If I kind of go counterclockwise, innovation for 23 years, um, IBM has been the number one patent producer uh, in the world, and we are actually generating 11% of those patents out of North Carolina, so highly innovative, high-tech uh, site. Um, I'll come to, back to this as well, but we really have a major focus on STEM, and especially with women and underrepresented minorities a number of initiatives, and I'd like to do even more uh, as we go forward. Um, and as you would expect from a, a company like IBM, very heavy in uh, community leadership. I will offer up one of the things I'm really trying to do, we have many leaders on our site here, is get out and help on, uh, by uh, being on nonprofit boards. We currently have over 35 um, <coughs> IBMers that, that are on, on boards, and if you are, you know, have any that uh, you think are in need of uh, uh, enterprise um, experience, um, executives, we'd be happy to, uh, to line up. I have a waiting list of ones that have uh, volunteered to do more. Um, and, and of course, we do a lot of uh, hours giving back. And then just uh, one very quickly on, uh, on the environment. The reason I like this is because it's totally grassroots. We have an IBM RTP green team, they call themselves. Um, our campus is actually a certified wildlife uh, habitat. So we have all the other paths, and we work with Boy Scouts and uh, now Girl Scouts as well to be able to get their gold stars and their, um, to move up to, to work there. So very, uh, very proud of all the environment work. Um, now let me talk about the, the partnerships um, that we have, and I kind of split it in three areas. What we do around collaboration um, annually, uh, we've done it for at least 15 years. We have an IBM University Day. We typically have about 300 participants bringing all the universities uh, together along with, um, we, we extend this out to, uh, to other enterprises and discuss areas that are of, uh, of interest to all. 
um, IBM, actually, we have a campus on the uh, uh, NC State Centennial campus. We opened it in, uh, in May, and I committed to work there one day a, uh, a month, and so far I've done it. I've been there May, June, July, and I get a good food truck lunch, so <laughs> we're very uh, happy about that. Um, we offer cloud services free of charge to universities. I'll talk a little bit more about that, but uh, very important, serious gaming. And then, of course, we have some adjunct professors and guest lecturers. Um, on recruiting, unfortunately, it was hard to get statistics, but North Carolina um, State is consistently in our top three. Normally, uh, our number one uh, college that we recruit from across IBM. Um, the, the real competition there is uh, University of Texas Austin, but we're pushing to, to keep North Carolina up there in the number one. Uh, UNC Chapel Hill is consistently in the, in the top 20. Um, we do about 200 students a year, so I just put over 2,000. But I know whenever we do any kind of alumni um, spirit event, it seems like there's way more than 2,000 uh, graduates from uh, North Carolina on our campus. Um, and then on the bottom there, right, especially as we go into next year, um, really want to focus on uh, getting diverse STEM students. Um, we got to meet with the uh, University of uh, North Carolina Wilmington yesterday. It was a great discussion and the work that's going on on, uh, on graduating diverse students there. And we're going to be coming down shortly, seeing what we can do to set up recruiting tables. But it's just so important for uh, our success and I think uh, the state's success that we really focus on getting um, women and um, underrepresented minorities interested in the STEMs. And then uh, on, on research and technology, that we have all kinds of in-kind grants, whether it's offering up software, curriculum, um, services for universities. We've done over 30 million in cash grants, faculty awards, our shared university research awards. I could go on and on. But you know, we, we, are, we are committed to this and, and uh, want to help make it work. Um, from a future student's needs, um, I mentioned T-shaped, but I really can't emphasize that enough. In, in today's work environment, you know, there's very few jobs in IBM that are, you just need the deep skills. They just don't exist anymore. If you think of if we're doing an offering for a client, we typically have the development, the developer, the, the tester, the, the, the marketing, the offering manager, project manager, all working together. When I hired, we had, you know, huge units of just development or just testing. And you could just have deep skills. But now, to be successful, you have to have some end-to-end -end knowledge. You have to understand how things work together, how clients will work together. So deep is important, but being able to work cross-discipline and understanding that is critically important. And maybe it, it seems obvious, but uh, communications is also critical. And sometimes, you know, we've had very, very sharp students, but if you can't communicate, they're just not going to be successful in the enterprise. So being able to communicate no matter what your discipline is is very important. Um, if I go over to the top right, um, of course, being a high-tech company, we need high-tech students coming out. But IBM does a lot to help enable that. We have the uh, IBM Academic Initiative, and again, that's offering up anything from uh, free software, cloud services. Um, we have now one on uh, two on Watson, so Watson Analytics Academic Program, Academic Engagement Program, uh, Serious Gaming. Um, we're conducting uh, Internet of uh, Things Education Roundtables. We have an IBM Cloud Academy. So it's very important to us. We want to work on that. Um, maybe the, the, the bottom one, IBM uh, System Z, that's our, our mainframe. That actually is in conjunction with many of the financial institutions, and right here in uh, Research Triangle Park, MetLife, in that their uh, employees that understand mainframe technologies are retiring, right, as that's how long the, the mainframe has been around and successful. And so specific programs so they can hire students coming out of the universities that know how to work on, on the mainframes. So that has been uh, very important to us. I talked about uh, diverse STEM and graduates are very important to us. Uh, we need entrepreneurial spirit. And then maybe finally, um, just technology is changing so fast that we really need students that, that understand they're going to have to continually learn. 
Um, they're saying half the students are entering the workforce um, accept jobs that didn't exist when they started college, right? Using technologies that haven't been invented. You know, when I started, we did office memos, right? And then we went to now called the dreaded email. Well, the millennials were hiring, and you know, we found out they won't even read an email if they don't know who it came from, right? It is not, we, we can't communicate with emails, right? We have communities, we do texting, we do instant messaging. So it's, you know, always having to recognize that you have to learn. And quite frankly, it's a challenge for us internally for some of our aging employees because as IBM's transformed, our jobs are changing. Maybe a simple example I like to use is that, uh, you know, today's largest uh, taxi company owns no vehicles. Well, what if, uh, Uber, obviously, right? But what if your expertise is fleet management, right? If you're the vice president of fleet management, you better retrain yourself because we don't need you anymore, right? <laughs> so you have to have this. And I think uh, if, if everybody is you know, right and just the, the explosion of data in every company, no matter what your industry is, is becoming a technology company because technology is changing the way your company operates, that you need to have um, students that, that continually uh, learn. Um, just a, a little bit on, on uh, joint research, you know, we certainly recognize between enterprise and, and universities that there are intellectual property um, policies that prohibit general um, collaboration, but I also believe, as you can see in the first one, we can be creative and we can carve out spaces and we can really work together and, and start doing some great things. And I loved the, the tip pro, uh, framework to, to help with that. Um, some we've done, uh, anything around open, IBM is very much uh, behind open standards. We're doing joint research there. Um, we started this new one, Extreme Red is the, the first one with, uh, with North Carolina State, but we're, we're, in, uh, we're in construction with uh, uh, University um, of North Carolina Chapel Hill with Extreme Carolina Blue and UNC uh, Charlotte is under discussion for Extreme Green. But that's working on within classrooms, IBM will sponsor projects that match up to our strategic initiatives. So we call it Extreme uh, Red. So anything, for example, around Internet of Things, cognitive, analytics, big data, we'll run these projects through with the students. And I think it's, it'll be really uh, positive as we go forward. Um, and those are just some other examples. Um, of areas that we've done research. But what I want to wrap up with is something that we're very excited about in IBM in North Carolina, and that's around uh, serious <coughs> gaming. I, I don't know if you all know, but Wake County is becoming the eastern hub for serious gaming. Um, this is a few years ago now, but one of my, my neighbors is co-founder of a large gaming company, and I had met him at a, at a uh, neighborhood party and he said, well, guess who my biggest client is? And so I, I was being a bit naive, I guess. So I was like, well, I don't know, you know, 21-year-old male, you know, I, I, you know who's your, your biggest client? And it was the U.S. government, right? It's because serious gaming is changing the way we do all training, learning. Um, it's, it's, you know, if you look at it from a... Um, that the, the components, there are certainly the platforms of so the modeling and the simulation, but it's people-centric engagement, right? It is really the way you can revolutionize how you learn and engage, and the course enabling on a cloud just <coughs> makes it accessible to everyone. Um, so just a, a few things. We, are, we run our serious gaming um, out of uh, our North Carolina campus, um, and uh, she is now the, the UNC Chapel Hill Social Entrepreneur in Residence, right? So I thought that was kind of cool um, for 2016-17. Um, but there's all kinds of summits. Um, we're, we're doing uh, design workshops. And I just think that there's even more to do. Um, the, the three key areas for us from an IBM is all around citizen engagement, uh, workforce training, and then building dynamic uh, practice playbooks. So as you're, you're thinking and going back, anything that uh, you, know, you want to do, double down from a university uh, perspective on gaming, I am here to volunteer. Just get a hold of us, and, and we'll see what we can do together. So that's uh, kind of what I wanted to cover. Thank you very much, Fran.
Any specific questions for Fran at this point? If not, we'll wait for the round table. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I'm interested in this gaming issue because <laughs> I don't do gaming. But um, my understanding is what you do is you develop the software for, and you come up with different games. And isn't the target market for those games? I know the government. You say the government, <clears throat> U.S. government uses them, but isn't it mostly people in their 20s and 30s well, who do well, the gaming? If you just call it gaming, that's true, right? It is very, very much a consumer base, and that is a huge market. But from IBM's perspective, we call it serious gaming. So it's really transforming how governments can be engaged with their citizens. And it, so the engine is the game. But if you think about it, um, I, I don't know the exact statistics, but they say in, uh, for example, training in an um, a, uh, emergency, um, what do we call it, EMT? What does it M stand for? Emergency response. That if they are trained through simulation or a serious game, they, they uh, the life, um, it, it, they're much more successful. They retain it and they don't have to go through repeat training and testing. So think of it, maybe simulation is, is a easier way. So training of pilots, training of any kind of training or engaging with a citizen, we would put under a serious gaming context. So Does that help? What percentage of what you do is the simulation, like we did one at Elizabeth City State on the uh, air traffic controlling. When we landed a plane, I crashed. <laughs> uh, I do too. I'm not very good at real games. <laughs> what percentage of it is the recreational gaming? I mean, isn't that the most? I mean, you know, where people. I, I wouldn't know the answer to that because from a uh, from an IBM perspective, we just kind of do the underlying engine and platform. So we actually work with with companies that sell real games to to uh, to people to play. And we use that same engine as, as a, a, that would be part, or the, the platform that would be used for the training or citizen engagement or um, the, um, what's our third category? For crowdsourcing, for example, can also problem solving, you use the, the engine for gaming underneath it. Uh, Marty. What are some of the things? Well, I think certainly getting more uh, curriculum and, and generating more students that are experts in how we can, um, you know, create more offerings around gaming is from, from an IBM uh, perspective. But if we wanted to do some, some joint um, projects on working with the government, for example, on how can we help engage citizens more, that, that might be an area, you know, we're, we're pretty much wide open as, as long as we can, um, you know, have the vision and an agree to this is the outcome that we want. I, I'm, I, I'm serious about serious gaming. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Marty's one of the top Pokemon guys. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon here. Um, there's, there's not any rare Pokemon here. <laughs> Something like that to me. Yeah, great. Yes. Hey. Oh, Rodney, sorry. Yes, Fran, thank you so much for joining us today. And most importantly, thank you for hiring so many of our students from throughout the system. My question for you is, as you look at ways of having more diverse applicants and 
from our HBCUs, I'd like to encourage you to at least meet some of the chancellors here today who are from our HBCUs and also perhaps consider going there for some of your recruiting. I know yep. you've mentioned that you're recruiting at some of the other schools. I just wanted to make sure that you were looking at them as well. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney. Yes. Thank you, Fran. Great. Thank you.